Today, we're here to talk about the role of key student leaders who play a range of impactful roles when on campus, and this remains true in our temporary virtual environment. Resident assistants are often friends and mentors. First year guides help new students as they adjust to college life and serve as a resource throughout the first year. Care center fellows foster intercultural communication, leadership and identity development. College programming board members seek to organize inclusive, diverse, and engaging activities that keep students connected across the globe. Thank you all for joining as we learn more about their vital roles and how they work together to make a difference for all CMCers. It's my pleasure to introduce our Dean of Students, Alumna and Associate Vice President, Diana Turner Graves. DT, the program is yours. Thanks for being here. All right, perfect. Thanks, Evan. So good to see all of you on the screen. Uh, I wish we were seeing you all in person, but this is, if not almost as good, definitely better than nothing. So really, really glad to see all of you. Um, as Evan said, my name is DT, so that's an old nickname that's stuck, and that's how our students refer to me and our staff and faculty, and um, I've been at the college, I'm a graduate, so I graduated in 98, and then I went and did some other things, uh, came back to the college, and I have been working here for uh, almost a little over 20 years, I guess now, so uh, I'm a lifer, and I absolutely love the place, and I think one of the things that has drawn me to Claremont McKenna, both as a student and then particularly as a staff member and in this role as the Dean of Students, is the community. I love the people here. I love that you can find an interest and pursue it here. I love that students care about one another. They care about being connected. Um, they care about being successful together. There are a lot of places um, that are of this academic caliber where there's this sense that people are kind of clamoring on top of one another to get to the top. And at CMC, there's a sense for me that there's enough to go around. There are enough research opportunities and ways to engage and um, you know, interactions with faculty and, and job opportunities and internships. And so rather than that feeling of like cutthroat competitiveness, there's this sense that we can all go up together. And that's a very, cool way to go to school. Um, but it's also a really intentional way that we have designed our program, our school to accomplish that. And so what we wanted to do today is just give you a sense of that and allow you to spend some time with our student leaders, ask them some questions, get a better feel for how they have found engagement opportunities and how they foster them now in these student leadership roles. Um, and then just hear from you, you know, what can we do to, to better that experience for your students. So um, I would like Vince Greer to introduce himself. Vince is a colleague in the Dean of Students Office who um, oversees some of these leadership programs. Vince? Thanks, DT. And first of all, hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I know we're obviously um, talking over screen. To DT's point, would love to have been able to see you all in person, but so excited to spend some time with you all this morning or early afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, again, I'm Vince Greer, the Associate Dean of Students for Diversity and Inclusion and residential life, um, quite a bit of a mouthful, but um, essentially what I mean with that is I'm responsible for overseeing our care center on campus, um, which as mentioned earlier is our space where it's really sort of dedicated to engage in a lot of these conversations around dialogue as it relates to you know, diversity, inclusion, um, identity development, and those sort of things. I also oversee our residential life, um, and a big part of that is our RA program. Um, like many other programs here at the college, we've had to make some major adjustments, but we're so excited for the great work that both um, our care center fellows as well as our RAs have been able to do in terms of adapting in this um, environment, this remote learning environment that we're in, along with all the rest of our student leaders. So um, I won't spend a ton of time talking about um, those things because you want to hear from the students way more than you want to hear from me. But I will say is that even in these times where we've been remote, we found some pretty creative and exciting ways to engage the student body. Um, and we try our best to find different ways. Um, some of that's gonna be direct communication. Some of that's gonna be through some creative um, engagement opportunities, which again, our students will go into detail about, um, but the spirit of CMC lives on. Our community is so strong. And even though we've been spread across the globe, we're just finding those ways to remind folks, even though we're far apart, we're still here at the same time. So um, if you all have any questions as it relates to residential life or um, the care center. I'm happy to answer those. I'm also joined again by some incredible student leaders that can go into way more detail. So I'm going to pass it along to them to have them introduce themselves. Um, and again, thank you for your time today. Perfect. Why don't we start with Alex? 
Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Alex Futterman. I'm a junior at CMC. I'm an international relations major with the sequence and leadership studies. Um, I'm from Newtown, Connecticut, and I'm representing College Pro Pro Programming Board today. Um, and I'm also a first year guide on the lacrosse team. Those are things, Alex. Max. Good morning for me, but afternoon, evening, depending on where everyone is. My name is Max Dawson. I'm a senior at CMC majoring in economics, finance, and math. Um, <clears throat> I'm a resident assistant, but also involved with student government on campus, ASCMC, and from San Diego, California, originally. Perfect, thanks, Max. Anna. Hi, everyone. My name is Anna. I'm a senior at CMC studying government and gender studies. Uh, I'm calling in from the East Coast. Uh, I live in Connecticut. We got some strong Connecticut representation on the call. Um, and I am here representing uh, Res Life as an RA and I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Anna. Josiah. Hi everyone, my name is Josiah Tarrant. I am a CMC junior. I'm majoring in economics with the leadership sequence kind of echoing Anna. I'm actually from Westport, Connecticut, so right near where she is. Um, and I'm representing CARE today. Thank you. Rachel. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Podol. I'm a junior at CMC studying psychology and legal studies. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm a first year guide. Awesome. Thank you. And Lupe. Hello, everybody. My name is Guadalupe. I'm a senior here at CMC. I'm studying math and Spanish, um, and I'm here representing CARE, but I also work with the RA group. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to give a two-minute framing about how we think about um, engagement and kind of student leadership at the college, and then we're just going to turn it over to our students. So basically, the way we think about student development here is really in a theoretical framework that's called self-authorship. And the idea of self-authorship is that over the course of the four years that students are here, we are um, trying to cultivate these skills and capacities so that when they walk out the door, they are fully equipped to be on their own, right? Theoretically, at the end of four years, you are employed or in grad school, or you have something going on, you're living independently, you're, right, you've got rent, you've got the whole thing. So what we're trying to do is make sure that our students are positioned for those kinds of challenges. And the way that we approach that within this framework is to think about how students think about their own knowledge. So what they believe to be true. Why do they believe it to be true? What are the experiences that have informed those beliefs and how might they think about getting new experiences to start to challenge those beliefs and better understand kind of the world and where they're at. That's the knowledge piece. The interpersonal then is really the relationships. So how do students build relationships with one another, with faculty, with staff, with the broader community, how they think about their internships and employment opportunities and other things. And then how do those relationships, again, kind of impact in the intrapersonal, how they think about themselves, right? What does it mean to do well in the world? What does it mean to do good in the world? Who do you want to be and how do you want to get there? And so unlike many places where that's a very transactional, you know, kind of in, um, approach where a student will come in and maybe they have a problem or they have a, um, you know, I need this or that kind of thing. Most often in our office, that is going to be turned back to the student and go, okay, that sounds really challenging. Like, how are you thinking about managing that? Or um, I have some ideas on this, but you should think about what the consequences of all those contingencies might look like, right? So we're trying to help students kind of lead them through a series of questions and give them a lot of agency. So if they are recognizing a problem on campus, how do you want to tackle that? Um, because at the end of the day, our students know our students better than we know them, and they are crazy capable. And so when you give them enough resources to go, they take off and make it happen. In the engagement sphere, sphere specifically, we focus mostly on three key themes. So one is community. That's really thinking about, again, how we build up that sense of belonging at our place. The second one is uh, purpose. So thinking about how do students start to zero in on things like major? Where are their passions? What are the problems in the world they want to solve? How do they want to do that? So what is their purpose? And then the third part is play. Um, it's really easy to get caught up in the credentialing game. It's really easy to get caught up in the, uh, 
you know, always forward thinking future, future, future and forgetting to have fun. And we really need our students to have fun too. And so community, purpose and play. And I think you'll start to pick up elements of that in this conversation with our students. So I'm gonna start, um, maybe I'll put Anna on the spot here for the first question, which is really when you think about student engagement and community at CMC, what are some things that like pop into your head? Yeah, I think um, to your point about like, um, like building community and kind of fostering all of these different skills, um, we really like from the RA perspective, we really want to just help students to feel comfortable navigating all of these things and kind of forging their own path at CMC. One of my favorite things about CMC is just like the plethora of resources to do anything that you're interested in and people come to CMC with all of these diverse and fantastic interests and skills and past experiences. Um, and so we really want to help students to navigate pre-existing resources and um, just find ways to bring whatever makes them special to our campus and um, find home. Everyone else has, everyone has their own like skills and talents and it's just such a beautiful um, community. And so we wanna help people to um, feel at home no matter where they're coming from or what um, their interests are at CMC. Thanks. Anybody else want to jump in on that one? What you, when you think about connection, what sorts of things pop in your head at CMC? Sure, Josiah, go ahead. Yeah, I would just add, I agree with everything Anna said, but something that has been so essential to like my experience is how the grades are really interconnected. And I think each of our leadership roles is a critical part of that. But when you're a first year at CMC, it's not like you're only going to be friends with the other first years. You really get like thrown in with first year guides um, to like welcome you and then your RAs to support you at home or at your new home. And then um, at the care center, even you're going to be engaged with people of all years. And then, of course, you're in classes and you're living next to people of the different years. And I think that's what's so special about the CMC community is that it really you support each other regardless of who how long you've been there. And if you're like us and more senior, you're going to support the first years um, and the second years and really create a connection that goes beyond the years. Good. Alex, you look like you had something to add there. I was just going to reiterate the um, inter-class connectedness, and it wasn't something that I realized was unique to CMC until I talked to other friends who went to other schools. Um, and like, I still keep in contact with like my RAs from my freshman year. And I think it just speaks like the impact that like, these like events where everyone goes like no matter what year they are like can like really have on so one of the things that um you know when we talk about leadership roles on campus i think that not not everybody knows precisely what that means or how students are drawn into those or how they find them so maybe i'll give everybody a chance just to talk briefly about their role you know what and then how you know what was it about being in that role that drew you to it in the first place. Um, Rachel, can I start with you um, in terms of first year guide and feel free to speak about advocates as well if you'd like. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm a first year guide and funnily enough, Max, who's also on the panel, was my first year guide. So pretty cool. But what really drew me to the role was how, like, I just think orientation, um, and like my relationship with my figs was so impactful and super important to me coming in as like a very anxious first year um, to sort of like get me going with CMC. And just immediately I had like a community of people that I could rely on, people that I could ask questions to, um, and just people that I knew would be there to eat meals with me and to support me and just like get me through the first few weeks of school. So that's definitely what drew me to the um, first year guide position. I just wanted to be that resource for other students. Um, kind of like what Alex and Josiah were saying, we are really um, centered on supporting each other at CMC, regardless of grade level. And you definitely want to pay that forward. Um, it's like the CMC mentality. Um, I know DT also mentioned my capacity as president of CMC Advocates for Survivors of Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence. And we've been doing a lot virtually as well as in campus to make sure that students are supported while they're living at home or living 
elsewhere this semester. So um, can talk more about that if people have questions, but just thought I'd throw that in as well. Great, thanks. Felipe, can you talk a little bit about um, you know, the care center and your role there and, and what the care fellows do? And then um, if you wanna to speak to the RA role as well, that would be fine. Yeah, so I've been in care center since my first year here on campus. Um, so the reason why I joined was actually as a previous student, which is when I was visiting different schools, the care center was a really big reason why I decided to join um, like the CMC community and come here. Um, so like as a care fellow, like we are creating discussions with students across campus about a variety of different topics. Um, so whether that's something that's happening or that's happened today or something that's happened a couple of years ago that we want to bring um, to awareness on campus and just to create a conversation. Um, that's one of the main main roles I think that the care fellows here um, take care of and like help do um, and do that we um, do that through like a variety of different events. So whether that's like watching a movie, creating a conversation, um, just bringing food on campus and things like that. We wanna foster a community and just create a space where students can have these conversations um, and open a space for students across like Claremont, like just CMC in general. So it's not just created for one particular group. Um, so we have a physical space on campus where students can go ahead and step up, have these conversations or just like grab a quick snack, make some oatmeal or anything like that. Um, I think that's a huge staple thing that brings a lot of students to the care center is like the abysmal amounts of like free food that we have. Um, and in terms of, yes, I do think the care house has the best snacks. Um, and I think in terms of like the RA role as well, um, being able to just like communicate with students, even though we're not on campus, like RAs in my opinion, and I think for a lot of students here have always been a huge role model for us since our first years. Um, it, it's kind of sad to know that like they're seniors and we get to see them graduate and then that's kind of it. Um, but we, I do keep in contact and I like a lot of students still keep in contact with the RAs after graduating just because they've served as like not only like really great role models but also served as really great friends. Um, so I think that also brings back that interconnectedness between students um, and all of these roles I think um, are seen as like students that you can just like be friends with and like create these strong connections with. Can I just briefly jump in there too? Lupe, I thought did a really great job of, of summing up the care center. Uh, I'll just say that like every other place on campus, we've had to make those adjustments to a virtual environment. Um, and, you know, the Zoom fatigue is real, um, as we all know, um, between the, the many classes our students are in and then still trying to engage with student orgs and a lot of other things. So um, in the care center, we've had to make some necessary adjustments around that. We still have programs that happen over Zoom for sure. Um, and provide those opportunities. But we've really sort of had to move a, a great deal of our programming and discussions uh, more to social media um, you know, uh, outlets and platforms just to meet our students where they are, right? So we know they're gonna be on Instagram or perhaps Facebook or any other TikTok and these things. So we, we're finding ways to creatively still engage in these topics, think critically, um, but also knowing, you know, it's a lot quicker to just sort of digest some of those things in a space like that versus perhaps um, in a much more in-depth dialogue um, over Zoom. So just thought I would throw that, uh, throw that out there as well. But thank you, Lupe, for really just sort of highlighting CARE. Perfect. Josiah, since you're representing CARE as well, do you have anything to add um, or just how you were kind of drawn into that opportunity? Sure. Yeah, I, I can add a little bit. Um, so I grew up in like a pretty conspicuous family and really was aware of a lot of differences um, in terms of like social, uh, yeah, like social issues. And uh, it gave me a very unique perspective. So when I got to CMC, having done, had a lot of these conversations in my own home community, when I got to CMC, I really wanted to continue that. Um, so I've loved getting to be a part of care and having these difficult conversations and learning from all of my fellow or my other care fellows um, and their unique experiences. Um, and another important element of care is really like, I guess creating community cross difference and having these difficult conversations, just like we do at like the Athenaeum. Um, so we really pride ourselves on bringing people together and maybe we all have different perspectives on something, but we learn how to talk about it um, in a really constructive way. And we might not change a lot of our minds, but at least we will get to see where other people are coming from at least. Awesome. Um, Max and Anna, I'm going to ask you guys to talk a little bit about the RA role, and then if you can talk specifically about how RA has worked in this environment so that you still have cohorts and just give them a little bit of a sense of that. 
Um, Max, maybe we'll start with you and then I'll turn it to him. Yeah, sure. Um, so what we've generally, I think, tried to do with the RA role is we, I think, all have a pretty clear picture, as some of the other students have pointed out, of what the RA role looks like on campus. And I think the task that we and Vince as well in Res Life have been faced with now is our RA term has been pretty much entirely virtual. And so we've had to kind of figure out some of the ways in which we can take what we know about the RA role on campus and sort of translate that. But what we found is that that alone tends to sort of fall short. And so we've also had to be a little bit innovative in terms of new things that we would not have ever done on campus and just by virtue of things that we hadn't thought of. And we've had to be really creative with that. And I think that's been that's been really helpful for just being able to, as Vince said, meet people where they are. Some people want to engage in big groups. Some people want to engage one on one. Some people want to engage in asynchronous activities where they can just kind of do their own thing on their own time and feel connected that way. And I think our big task has really been to kind of figure out how to offer opportunities so that every student coming from every sort of preference area is, is able to find a way to engage with us. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I think like the RA role is one of these very essential like layers of student support. So to questions about how we're supporting first years, um, we're really just doing our best between the FIGs and the RAs and, um, you know, CARE and CPB and all of these other uh, on campus groups that are providing programming that's accessible to everyone um, to meet people where they are. And to Vince's point as well about like Zoom fatigue is very real and um, I've had a lot of conversations with Devin, another one of the members of the Dean of Students Office, about um, this weird dichotomy where you kind of have to be online in some ways to, you know, go to class or maybe see those emails that we're sending out about our programs. And it does kind of require us to put in a certain amount of being online and that can feel very taxing. And so we've tried to really do our best to meet people in all of their, um, in, in all of the online capacities, whether it's by email, by Instagram, uh, by texting people, by calling people, but also trying to give people ways to engage offline as well. So this semester, especially the Dean of Students Office and all of the on-campus groups, um, as you guys have probably seen based on the number of packages that are arriving at your house, if your student lives with you, uh, we're doing so, so many different things to try to meet people offline as well. Uh, because, you know, we're really trying to make sure that we're supporting students, supporting students' mental health, um, and, and really just giving them different ways to engage, whether um, they want to be online all the time or whether like Zoom life makes them want to just like spend the rest of their time hiking in nature, whatever that may be. One of the benefits, I think, of um, the way we structure our RA program that's allowed this transition to happen um, pretty well is that the RAs at CMC are really positioned as, um, I mean, you heard them describe themselves as friends, right? Like they're, it's almost like an older brother or sister kind of role where you have somebody that really knows the place, is very connected into the resources, kind of like that firm older sibling who doesn't let you make wrong turns, you know, like that's not cool. That's not how we do things here. But it's not a policing role where they're writing people up and doing that kind of thing the way that you often feel that at other campuses where the RAs are, are feared. They're more authoritarian than they are resources and guides. So it's a pretty big difference here. And I think that that ethos has allowed us to transition online in a way that we might not otherwise have been able to very effectively. Um, Alex, I'm going to ask you to talk about CPB and, and the first year guides, and then I'm just going to open this up for questions. We have a number coming up in the chat. So go ahead, Alex. Yeah, totally. So I would say CPB's role on campus is offering. Um, CPB was kind of founded on this idea that there was like a gap in programming. And so on campus, we would typically offer like three substance free programming events a week on Thursday, Friday and Saturday, just to give students like more options um, and ways to spend their time. And virtually we have um, lessen the amount of days because I think the biggest issue that we've been seeing is like nobody wants to spend more time on Zoom, but people when they come to our events are like happy that they went. So it's like overcoming that um, that issue and, and getting people on their computers again. Um, and I was drawn to CPB as a freshman because I got these email in my inbox with all these cool events to go to. And I was like, I can just like go to them. And I, um, went to a bunch of them and made some really great connections 
and had these just organic interactions with so many students on campus and was able to feel super connected right away. And um, when applications came out, I was like, oh, I want to I want to be a part of this. And so um, I've been in CBB since my freshman year and was in the PR and marketing branch until this year. Um, and I think the biggest challenge that we've been trying to overcome is like, I think I think it's funny that everyone else said this, but it's like meeting students where they are and making sure that we are in the spaces that they're in because everyone wants to be connected and we just have to make it the easiest um, for them to be connected as we can. Perfect, thanks so much. So I'm gonna pull some of the questions out of the chat and as you have additional ones, please throw them in there. And Vince, as you see them coming in too, feel free to jump in here. So one of the questions, um, which I think is a really important one is how is this gonna work next year when we have two years of students who've never really been on campus? Like how are we gonna do all of this? So um, first of all, the answer to that question also presumes that we are on campus. And I just want to say unequivocally, that is where we're headed. We have, we are ready. Is the moment the county permits us to return students this fall, we're in. Um, and that does seem to be the direction that the county's headed. So I am really optimistic that we are going to be back um, this fall. The, the reality is that we will have two full years of students who have never been on campus to live here. Our juniors will have only spent a semester and a half here, and our seniors will have spent basically a year and a half. So we um, are getting really creative about that. How are we going to train student leaders to make sure that all of this important, uh, these principles and values that you're hearing from our student leaders now make their way down? I'm not nearly as worried about that as you might think. Um, I think that the culture of CMC in that regard is actually really strong. I think that our recent graduates are gonna be very involved in that. And I think our training, the way, we, the way we cultivate leadership here is something we actually can do virtually and it actually is something we can do in the summer. Um, we rely a lot on sophomores in our first year guide program. And we will continue to rely on some sophomores and many of our juniors and seniors to play that first year guide role. Um, and so what that will mean is a lot of training, we'll be running that um, application process over the next couple of months. And then in May and into the summer, we'll just be diving in to really make sure students feel super capable of doing that work. Getting to know the campus actually doesn't take as long as you would think. You know, you walk on and it's very overwhelming, but within a week or so, you know what you're doing. You know where you're headed, you know where you're going. Um, it's also a huge opportunity. You know, we're going to have a lot of new students here who are going to be able to take some ownership of the campus and what do they want it to look like and be. And I think that's going to be really powerful. So it will it will work, but it's you bet it's going to look a little different than it has in the past. Um, other questions you see here. So we talked a little bit about how all the first years, actually every student at CMC has been assigned and a resident assistant. Um, Max and Anna and Lupe, there's a question in the chat about how you're going about engaging folks. Could you talk about that a little bit, how, you, how you're approaching it with your own cohort? Yeah, I'm happy to start us off on that one. Um, and I think it's a really important question that, as I said before, we really are trying to figure out how to how to how to meet people where they are and how to get people engaged in ways that are going to be sustainable for them to want to continue doing that. Um, you know, if we get someone to go to one event or one program, that's great. But ideally, we'd love to have them continue to participate throughout the semester. And that really is our goal. Um, so as for checking in with students and specifically with first years, like DT said, every student is assigned an RA, including new first years, including people that may have just come back to campus for this semester and were, for whatever reason, not, not taking classes last semester. Um, and what we've done with the RAs is checking in at least every two weeks, but often more, um, just to kind of see, you know, what, what's going on, how are tests going, how are classes, um, how are extracurriculars, how's the home life, everything like that. And what I found, at least from my personal experience, is that RAs have taken pretty different approaches to that. I'd love to hear how, Han how Anna and Lupe have done that. I think many have presented themselves, a, offered themselves as resources of, you know, if you're going through kind of a struggle that I might have, I might have had some experience with or might have had a friend that's had some experience with, let's see if I can help out there. Some are presenting them just as, you know, kind of, how, how are you doing? Are you okay? Are you handling this well? Um, and others are, are saying, you know, here's some programming opportunities that you might be interested in. And, and some are doing all three. And I think that's, that really speaks to kind of the, the diversity that we have within the RA community. And our goal is that hopefully 
someone will will feel really heard by by one particular or more methods of, of outreach that we're doing. Thanks. Hannah or Lupe, did you have anything you wanted to add or did Max pass it? Yeah, I can jump in. I think um, to Max's point, uh, at the beginning of the year, we didn't really know what this was going to look like or what was going to work. And uh, Jenny and Vince were like very, Jenny, our other Res Life director, uh, was were both very transparent with us about like we were doing something new in a virtual format um, and we weren't sure what what would work and what wouldn't. And so we've really tried to evolve throughout the year to make sure that we're making our events as accessible as possible to everyone. Because when we're on campus, there's this great ability um, to maybe see a poster in a dorm for some event that's being hosted in Burger or Beckett or anywhere else and just pop into those events and maybe get to know those RAs. And even if um, you like don't feel super close to your RA, maybe you meet another RA and you really like chatting with them. And we really try to like triage that support. And so we've been trying to kind of evolve in our programming as well to do that same thing. So this semester, for example, we started um, a res life inform where every week we send out an email to all the students, letting them know what events are happening in every dorm. So um, for example, like this week, there was a game night on Monday where you could work on puzzles with the RA of Benson um, or tomorrow night, I'm hosting a game night on Friday that's open to everyone. Um, and so we're really trying to just access everybody and make ourselves as accessible to everyone across the campus so that maybe one first year who doesn't have anything to do tomorrow night says, um, I guess I'll go to this game night being hosted by Anna and maybe they'll come and they'll meet other first years or other students and really help them to build more little connections within the CMC community. So somebody private messaged me a question, which is what has been your favorite like engagement activity this year, either that you've done or that you've been a part of, you know, participated in or a box that came your way or whatever it might be. Um, anybody want to take a stab at that one? Sure, Alex, go ahead. Okay, this is a very exciting question because my favorite, of course it was a CPB event, was my favorite event that I went to. And one of our directors, we found that sometimes, especially virtually really niche events have been, been really successful. Um, and one of our directors came up with a Euphoria makeup event, um, like Euphoria, the, the HBO show with Zendaya. And um, we, I did it with the people that I'm living with and we did this like blue eyeshadow like thing and we had like it was all sent like we had like a makeup palette sent to us and like jewels and um it was like the most fun thing ever to like sit with my roommates and like we all tried to like put this blue eyeshadow on and we all looked pretty crazy and then the person leading the event was one of our classmates who's very good at this whole makeup thing and um hers looked so great and we I like look like to my roommates and like we both have like blue eyeshadow just like all over the place like and all on our face but like it was just like such a great memory and those like pictures that I have um and like the zoom screenshot of us all like in the camera with like our like blue eye it was just like such a fun it was such a great event oh my gosh thank you John didn't need to be a part of that one. that's right um awesome anybody else go ahead Rachel yeah, so um, I talked a little bit about this earlier, but in my capacity, like working with advocates, um, we've had a bunch of virtual events and we're going to be having even more virtual events this semester. So keep an eye out for that. Check your emails. I know that's like the common saying, but please check your emails. Um, we actually had an event during first semester that was focused on how to maintain healthy relationships. Um, over long distance. I think it's something that's super important that a lot of students are dealing with right now is trying to communicate with their partners virtually. Um, and so we had, we brought in a speaker who gave a great presentation about how to maintain those connections in a healthy way and to make sure that you're, you know, prioritizing yourself and ways to set boundaries in a virtual setting. So that was one of my favorite events. Um, yeah, it was just like, always good to get like more information on how to like, like directly related to our virtual setting. I love that Rachel and I, that's like a key thing. Like I don't think 
people were right that's something students were thinking about that the dean of students office wasn't necessarily and so i think that's a really good example of that and um it comes to life right it comes to life when you're texting each other when you're doing other things like so putting like practical words and skills on that i think is brilliant love that um anybody else have a favorite activity or engagement that they want to talk about The more the better on this one, you guys. Don't feel like you're taking up space on this one. I think one of the best. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, go 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 in. I'll go after. I think to everybody, it's like one of the best things about being a leader is kind of having um, very easy access to design programs that we want to. Um, this semester, especially, there are way. Um, there's a lot more access to resources for anyone to use um, part of what we're calling like the staying connected fund um, to really like have the resources to be able to explore any kind of passion that students are interested in. Um, but some of my favorite events have also just been really informal ones. My co-RA Nassim and I have been hosting weekly coffee chats where anyone can just come through. We usually send an email like the night before saying like, coffee chat tomorrow, bring your coffee, like just come hang out and start your day with a random mix of people from like the broader Green Hall community. Um, and it's a great way for people to just like see the email when they're waking up, pop into the call before they go to class or anything else. Um, and having the opportunity to have those kind of informal interactions as well that we're, we're sort of lacking during this time has been such a great way to add a little bit of spontaneity and fun and connect people uh, with other students in the way that they might run into people in the dining hall or at tea or other type, the types of venues on campus. The something I was going to talk about, which was like super recent, is I think being virtual has created some cool opportunities for like collaboration. So just like that last week, I actually got to help moderate a ath talk largely because of care. Um, that we brought in a speaker it was a joint between the Kravis Leadership Institute and the CARE Center it was all talking about like being an inclusive leader uh, and that was a really cool event that I don't know if like it would have that collaboration would have happened if it honestly wasn't for virtual um, events and I think that's a cool thing is like the app has really pivoted to make that like really accessible and flexible where I often am actually like enjoying just like putting that on during dinner and like watching that um, something else I wanted to highlight is in a couple of weeks, we're gonna uh, care is putting on what's called the what we're calling the peer conference, where we're gonna uh, be having a lot of awesome programming um, all around um, the issues we are always talking about, so diver diversity, equity, and inclusion. We are we have some pretty awesome speakers, uh, largely because of the virtual nature of this. Really lets us uh, bring some great people in. So we're really excited about that, and it's gonna be all over our social media. I think we even have like our own uh, Instagram handle. So that's something that's coming up that we're very excited about. Great. Any other ones on that? Um, and maybe specifically, if anybody can speak to something that seems to be working well for first years. I know first year parents in particular have been really concerned, right, that their, their first year students don't know how to do this in the same way that you do. And so has there been any, um, you know, specific outreach to first years that you could speak to? <clears throat> I can speak a little bit on like two events that actually are care and RA. I noticed that a lot of like first years as well as like other students are very much attracted to food, like free food. Um, like this is no joke. Like if you are offering like if we offer like a Grubhub meal or like we offer to like reimburse students for things, um, they love to hop on. So like one of the events that I hosted last year with another care fellow, um, her name's Nada and we like talked about like Zoom fatigue actually and like what it's like to be in front of a screen for a really long time and just having to continue to have that energy but also knowing that it's okay to step back to have your uh, like screen off and we talked about like different strategies that students could use in order to just kind of regain some of that energy because um, we know that like, being like on a screen from like 8 a.m to 8 p.m or depending where you are located like across the world can be very like difficult um and we actually had a pretty good turnout in terms of like first years for that um which was actually pretty cool we did offer them like a starbucks card uh like at the time that they could kind of drink um like as we had this meeting it was more of like an informal event like uh, we had a little brief uh presentation um but just the fact that i think that we're offering students um like 
a chance to have like a cup of coffee or like get like a Chipotle meal or something like that, very much like attract students. Um, and in addition to that, for RA, my co-RA and I, co, co, RA, co I was gonna say co-host for some reason, co-RA Placide and I um, have noticed that movies are very, and games, um, CMC students are very competitive um, and not in a bad way, but like in a very fun way, they love to play games and things like that. Um, so we hosted like a Pictionary, uh, I think it's, I think it was called Pictionary, um, like online game where students were able to kind of draw what they wanted and you had to guess what it was. Um, and our first year turnout was actually pretty high. Um, I think the majority of them were first years. Um, and it was really fun just seeing these students engage, um, kind of compete against each other. Um, it was a South Quad event, which is one of like the areas on campus. So we had three other dorms competing against each other. Um, so the fact that we had students here, um, like just like having conversation, like jumping in every once in a while, um, like to make like a comment while we were like drawing really, I was drawing really bad in my opinion, um, but being able to see like that engagement between students and like being able to see how, what brings students on like food and like games and things like that was very fascinating. Um, and now like we, I know what it is that they like. So we're hosting more events like that. Yeah. How have engagement numbers been? So I'm, I'm asking because when in the Dean's Students Office, we're doing a project called Mystery Box and um, working in close concert with the Soul Center for Student Opportunity on that. And as of this week, we've had about 700 unique participants in that program, which is a pretty good number. But the question for us now this week is who are the ones that haven't participated, right? By name, who are those people and how do we reach out to them and draw them into this? So I'm curious um, how your engagement numbers have kind of looked in your respective spaces and have you seen it ever flow? Like, has it gone up? Has it gone down over the last few weeks or months? Go ahead, Rachel. Yeah, I think um, I can, I'm just speaking in like capacity as a fig. I think for fig events, we sort of found that what works best for students is more so like one-on-one -on -one interactions than like group events. We had we did have a few group events that were attended, but um, I think, you know, and like working as a first year guide, you have two other co-figs to lean on as well. And so I think like, as our first years got to know us, they sort of identify or find certain like identifiers or interests that we have that we share with them. And so then you're able to sort of foster more important connections. So for instance, like one of my first years or right now is actually super interested in the internship that I had last summer. And so I've sort of been working with her to try to, you know, connect her with people and talk to her about the experience. Um, and so I think just like finding those sort of meaningful connections that you have with your first years has been like the more individual approach has been um, like sort of where, like where I've been hanging, but in terms of like virtual events that I've hosted in other capacities, I would say that like engagement has been better than expected for a lot of things. Um, I know that like we get so many emails with different events and I'm like, how can people attend all of these? It's so overwhelming. Um, but I think people really find the things that they're interested in and they go to those and that's awesome. So I think like at one of our events, we actually had upwards of like 80 participants, which is awesome um so it really does depend on what the event is though anybody else want to chime in on that one yeah if i also could add briefly and i think also to incorporate the last question about sort of specific engagement to first years um, I, as I mentioned in my in my introduction, I'm part of the student government on campus, and we typically are on campus, at least the body that will plan a lot of sort of these big class wide school wide type events. Um, and we've had to really adapt those to a virtual format as well. And so I want to give a lot of credit to our first year class president, which is someone who was elected virtually who has ran his entire campaign and has really just basically done everything virtually without having been on campus at all. Um, his name is Michael and he's planned a lot of really, really awesome events that from my understanding have really engaged a lot of first years. Um, I mean, these are things such as he, we sponsored a bunch of uh, DoorDash gift cards for everyone and, and they all sort of got online for dinner and sort of had a Collins um, our, uh, recreation, something like that, because it's, 
as I'm sure we've all seen, it's, it can be tough to recreate sort of that atmosphere of just having a lot of people in one place. Um, and I think Michael's done a really great job of throwing those sorts of synchronous events, as well as asynchronous events, things like sending out class boxes, working on a class cookbook, um, doing a hometown challenge where people would submit um, pictures of their hometown and, you know, in, in, in to enter into a raffle. And I think that a lot of those are ways that Michael has been, been really good at kind of engaging these first years and, and giving them opportunities to get involved that aren't necessarily just replications of campus because for a lot of those first year students that's not something that really grounds them in any experience um, and so i think that he's been doing a really good job of that yeah i think that's such an important point you know we can't expect our first year students to know i mean they don't have the same landmarks like literal landmarks you know collins is not a thing for them yet like they're aware of it but the dining hall they haven't done the dining hall yet right so trying to, to kind of create other ways of staying really engaged with this introduction, I think has been really powerful. Um, I love the pictures also on Insta. It was so fun to see people just like claiming their spaces where they live and, you know, the power of those photos. I think it was really, I don't know, to me, it just sort of like brought these experiences to life a little bit. Um, Vince, what are you, you know, as the director of Res Life and, and overseeing care, are there things that you're seeing that seem to be working better than other things or, you know, points that you want to add to the mix on this? Yeah, I mean, I hate to be a sort of broken record in some ways, but, you know, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we recognize that folks are in so many different places and managing um, so many different priorities. So we're always trying to find those unique ways to engage. So I even think about in terms of the care center, when we started to sort of shift our model. Um, we still wanted to create the essence of care in some other way. So, you know, we created a, a program, for instance, like uh, called Care Voices that allows folks to really sort of um, share various ways that they can express themselves. So whether that's through um, blogging, um, art posts, videos, um, around a range of different topics, but again, to keep these sort of conversations at the forefront, um, and that can be very difficult in a virtual format. A lot of these conversations were designed to be face-to-face. -face. Um, so folks have talked a lot about, you know, early around the care center and that sort of aspect of community. Um, and so to sort of try to replicate that online um, is challenging. And yet at the same time, students are stepping up because they want to share their stories. They want to share experiences, uh, find commonalities. Like this is a game changer to be in this environment. And perhaps maybe the only time in a lifetime, hopefully, knock on wood. Um, and so being able to still sort of share, hey, how they're going about navigating these things. You know, we're having a lot of these issues and conversations on a broader level um, across the country. And so finding those entry points still in creative ways. I think about some of our TikTok challenges, for instance, where, you know, these are social media engagement and yet at the same time, students are finding ways to raise awareness around issues, um, creative ways, sometimes, um, not always thought provoking, but even, you know, entertaining and exciting too, because though these conversations are very, um, you know, vital and, and um, at the same time, we always want to have a, a level of, um, you know, engagement and fun about this as well too. It shouldn't feel like it's just super taxing. I think about, you know, our RAs and just so many different types of pr programs um, to really, from a creative standpoint, and I talked about, you know, the coffee chats and these sort of things where it's like, hey, even if we're not in person, we're gonna find a way to connect with you. And some students, they're having one-on-one -on -one text conversations regularly, you know, sometimes several times a week. Uh, and some students are like, you know what? I'll reach out if I need help. And we try to sort of meet them halfway where they're, where we're never gonna leave you fully to yourself, but at the same time, we recognize for some people, you're trying to balance just being an adult perhaps, maybe not even living under your parents' roof. And so, you know, we understand that and try our best to meet folks halfway as much as possible. Um, but we, we really sort of take serious as much as engaging the population in different ways. And we figure if we can get a touch point one way or another, then we're finding a way to stay connected. So I would say that's a brief overview, but, you know, definitely if folks have questions, like more specifically, we'd love to sort of dive into it, um, just to, you know, give a little bit more of a flavor. BT, if I could just jump in here as well. Sometimes Sometimes engagement can be low as well. Like last after Thanksgiving, when we were going into finals, like people had a lot going on with school and some people are home and have limited capacity to show up to these types of events. Um, and that's really okay as well. Like 
as student leaders, we really understand the experience that students are going through and we understand and empathize with those feelings of Zoom fatigue and wanting to show up to an event but feeling a little too tired to be there or things like that. But I think the key point is that we're still here and we're still trying and we're still putting ourselves out there as much as possible. And as a first year, I think it took for me personally, like a little bit of time to realize how serious everyone was, like my RAs and my figs and the people in DOS were when they said like, we're here for you. And if you need anything, like go into Hegblade Center where the, D where the Dean of Students office is located or like show up to your RAs open door hours or just text your fig and say like, I'm having a really hard week and I don't know how to process it. And so for these first years who are living at home or for first year parents who are trying to figure out how your child is engaging or how to help your child engage, I think the most important thing to know is just that we're here and we want to be accessible. And whenever students feel like they want help or if they need help and they don't know how to access it, that's what we're here to help them do. And that's like what we love to do. And that's what makes us want to be in these roles. Yeah, jumping off with Aunt, what Anna said, I think I speak for a lot of CMC students, especially like a lot of my friends in the fall are so excited to like show everyone what CMC is like we just like cannot wait to like spread the love. Um, and the second part of that is like, I really think you could contact a lot of CMCers and upperclassmen, even if they're not in leadership roles and um, like sit down with students for like 10 minutes and be like, what are you super interested in? Okay, like check out XYZ opportunities that like you could find really interesting. And so it, it is really about like connecting those students and even outside of leadership roles, I think a lot of students just want people to be happy at CMC. So I wouldn't hesitate to like encourage your students, like reach out to people because we all want to help. Like we're all eagerly waiting just for like someone to like ask us like what to, like what can they do? Because we all want that. Yeah, that's, go ahead. Really quick, I was just gonna say, I can't add enough of how grateful I've been for our student leaders in terms of their input. Like, you know, we're all trying to do this, reimagine, you know, an environment and, and to, you know, start from scratch. You all have been just so great with feedback. Hey, that's not working. Or, hey, we need to pivot in this direction. Or, you know, we need to put more of an emphasis in here. And those things go a long way uh, because, again, you all have a pulse on the community in ways that we could only dream of in the Dana Students Office. Um, and so I think that speaks very much to the, the culture and the nature of our, our student leadership programs. These aren't just about titles in nature. They are in the weeds. They're making some really important decisions alongside of us. We really sort of tap into their perspective uh, and expertise at oftentimes on the student experience. So um, that allows us to craft things. You know, even our program model um, with the RAs, like we went from a lot more of an emphasis on individual buildings to more collective programming and really sort of engage as much of our student body as possible. And that's a big part of listening to our RAs, our virtual RAs and saying, hey, this would allow us to you know, have even greater reach um, on the student body. So I just have so much love for the student leaders and I just wanted to acknowledge how much of a contribution you all play in us shaping this experience. Yeah, I appreciate that Vincent and absolutely concur. Um, I threw my email in the chat and Hopefully you've all heard some of the efforts that are underway to help with engagement, specifically around community, purpose, play. Um, if you have a student who you're worried about, right? I just don't feel like they're engaging at all, or I don't know how to get through to them, or I'm really concerned or whatever, send me an email. Um, we have all kinds of discreet ways to reach out to students. You know, we can get in there and just check in on them. How are they doing? Get a better sense of those specific things. Like what would draw your student out? And there are lots of ways for us to approach that. So please don't hesitate. I see a bunch of our students putting their information in the chat as well. So feel free to scroll through there and shoot them an email um, if you have additional questions. And we're just so glad you're all able to join us. Thanks for coming today.